Saint Edmund Appiah, the head pastor of the Church of Pentecost. We want to welcome you to our channel. Uh, this is one of our broadcasts uh, of messages for our people within Finland and beyond. Today's first message, I have entitled it, Our Basic Belief. When we look at what is going on in our world today, with the emergence of this coronavirus, COVID-19, and its um, implications to you and for me and all mankind globally. In fact, many people are asking questions. Many people are looking at all kinds of directions. Many people are indeed very, very, very frightful and fearful of their lives. And when it comes to a time like this, what should the believer do? What should the child of God do? I believe that, number one, we should be looking at what we are, what we stand for, what we believe. And so I am embarking on this short message entitled, Our Basic Belief. I want to read with you, uh, Psalm 14, 1 to 7. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have committed abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have come become corrupt, there is no one who does good, not even one. Do all the workers of wickedness not know, who eat up my people as they eat bread, and do not call upon the Lord? They, there they are in great dread, for God is with the righteous generation. You will put to shame the counsel of the afflicted, but the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. When the Lord restored his people, Jacob will rejoice, Israel will be glad. Amen. This is the word of God. And this reading that we have read, uh, it tells us that it is only the fool who thinks in his heart or her heart that there is no God. And so in reviewing our basic belief, I want to reiterate that we believe in God. Now when we say we believe in God, somebody will ask, who is God then? Who is God? In fact, we cannot see God with our naked eyes. Neither can we touch Him or feel Him. But we can see the things that He has done, He has created around us. In fact, those who fall into the category of fools say these three things. Number one, they say that uh, the things that are around us, the mountains, the valleys, the rivers, the moon, the stars, uh, the creation, the sea, and, and, and all the things that are around us. First of all, they, they say that it is not there. This is what some scientists or some people uh, think about the world. It is not there. It is non-existent. I mean, you and I don't need to argue with such people. Uh, we know that it is fallacy. Number two, the, some, of, some people are also saying that uh, it has always been there. The world, the creation, the universe has always been there. Well, I think it takes a greater faith to believe in that. That it has always been there. Nothing happened, nothing, nothing you know, brought it about. It has always been there. Now, other people are also saying that uh, it started at some point in time. Uh, this is what we call the, the Big Bang Theory. They, they, they simply say that the world was not in existence as we see it, but one reason or the other, some certain molecules and certain things came together and it created what we see. Uh, my argument is that if you throw things in your garage many times, would you, are you going to see a manufactured car parked there at some point in time? 
I think we don't need to argue about that. But we believe that this universe was put there by somebody. If you look at the order, if you look at the way it works, it will look, if you look at the beauty of it, it, if you look at the way the universe is, is well organized, it tells you and me that there is a bigger hand that was at work to bring it about. And that big, bigger hand is nobody but God. We believe that it is God who put this universe into existence. Now, the universe, as, it, as big as we can see it, as, as awesome as we can see it, as beautiful as we can see it, there can only be a hand that is far more intelligent to bring these things about. Now, if that person, if that uh, personality, if that entity is, is, it, it can, can create such a thing, then he himself is as powerful uh, than any other thing that we can imagine within the universe. And so this means that God is all-powerful God. He is all-powerful God, an intelligent God who can bring such uh, a, a, a huge you know, universe into being. Now, what can we say about God? He is inconceivable as far as you and me with, you know, infa with fallible minds that we have, with little intelligence that we have. We, we consider God as inconceivable. We consider God to be awesome. We consider God to be powerful. Somebody who is all powerful. We consider God to be somebody who is very creative. When we look at creation around us, uh, the tons of water that is carried by the waves and it comes to our shores and it calmly drops down. We can see that this hand of God that moves all things around is indeed from a powerful God. Now, since we know that uh, the one who is behind this creation, the universe and the rest is an intelligent being, we must assume, we must accept that he is a person. He can see, he can feel, he can think, he can decide, he can speak, and above all, he can relate. He can decide, he decided to create this earth. He can see he, because he can see what is going on around us. He can feel because he, he, he loves what he, he does. And that is why he created you and me. These qualities make the, the creator of the universe or the possessor of the universe a person. A person doesn't mean the body that we have. We live, our personality lives in this body. A uh, 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 personhood lives in this body. But out of this body, we operate as a person. God is not a human being. Even though he possess all these qualities, he possess all these faculties, he is not necessarily a human being who have, you know, heart, who have lungs, who have you know, uh, kidneys, who have legs, who have feet, and the rest. We, he is, number one, spirit. God is spirit. He is a person, but he is a spirit. A spirit who can see, a spirit who can speak, a spirit who can decide, a spirit who can create, and a spirit who can relate to people. That is, in a summary, who God that you and I serve is. He is also omnipotent. He is omnipotent. God is omnipotent. And that is why he is able to create the vast universe that you and I live in. In fact, the Bible says, in him we live, move, and have our being. I believe that the gist of this message may begin to, you know, trickle in your mind, may uh, inspire you to begin to think about the things of God and who God represents. Thank you. We will continue from here. God bless you.